So I'm here with Peter Rowland, the Managing Director at MicroX. Um, Peter, why would you want to fit a CT scanner on an ambulance? Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> long, long story. Um, yeah. Look, it's, it's all about stroke. Um, and the thing about stroke is that uh, you, you can't start to treat a stroke uh, until you know what kind it is. It, there's two kinds. It's a, it's a clot or it's a bleed. Usually it's a clot, but uh, in about 75% of the cases, it's a clot. And you can start, once you know it's a clot, you can start to treat uh, by injecting something called TPA, which is a clot busting drug. However, if you got it wrong and it turns out that it's a bleed and you give them a clot bluster, you will probably kill the patient. So, uh, so you've got to get a diagnosis before you can start treatment. Uh, now, the, norm, the only diagnosis that the medical world accepts for telling the difference between the two types of stroke is a CT scan. Uh, so when you have uh, a stroke, you, you know, you're losing millions of brain cells per minute and, until you get that first injection. Um, but you've got to have a CT scan first, uh, which means, you know, without mobility, that CT scan is in a hospital. So how far, how many minutes away from a CT scanner do you live? In, in rural and outback Australia, uh, a long, long way. So your chances of, of recovering from a stroke are, are not good. Uh, so our technology basically uh, shrinks a CT to something, you know, from something that weighs three quarters of a ton um, to, uh, you know, a, a small ring scanner, we think about 30 kilograms, certainly light enough to go in an RFDS airplane or an ambulance. Uh, and you can, you, you take the CT scan to the patient. So the, as soon as you get to the patient, you can give them a CT scan. Uh, you can wireless that image to a, a radiologist who will, who will look at the image pronounce the diagnosis and say, yes, give the patient TPA. And you've just, uh, you know, you've just reduced the time to treatment to well inside that golden hour. And the stroke recovery statistics inside that golden hour are spectacular. Cool. So MicroX is aiming to um, design a CT scanner that will, uh, a smaller CT scanner. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the technology? How is that going to work? Yeah, the, the, um, what our technology is, is, uh, is, is uh, it, it's kind of like a, uh, if I can make an ana analogy, it's like every other x-ray tube in the world is, is, is powered by a thermionic uh, hot filament, a bit like the old fashioned light bulb. Our technology is, is solid state and cold. It's, it's more like an LED. Um, <clears throat> a good analogy because it's, you know, it, it's much more efficient in power. It has a very, very long life and it's very, very energy efficient. Uh, but one of the clever things is you can electronically control it. You can turn it on and off in a microsecond and you can, uh, you can get a, uh, because of that, what we can do is we can simulate a rotating CT. Uh, if you've ever had a CT uh, exam in a hospital, you've sat inside this giant donut that uh, that whirs. The reason it whirs, it's very awkward. It's very awkward, right? And it whirs. Um, inside that donut is is hidden an, an X-ray tube and a detector in a gantry. They're at opposite sides, um, and it and it spins around you at around 200 revolutions per minute. Um, and, you know, that's quite complex engineering because, uh, uh, you know, the, the X-ray tube's got 150,000 volts connected to it. And, and of course, the precision of, of keeping the source uh, stable compared to the detector is important. So that explains why a CT machine is, is you know, close to, uh, close to a million dollars a copy. Uh, with our, our system, we do it differently. We... Uh, we have these, uh, we've shrunk the tube and on, on for this product, uh, the x-ray tube is gonna be the size of two golf balls. And we've got a range of those in the, in the top end of the arc of the, of the um, uh, uh, that sits above the patient. And basically we just fire each one of those x-ray tubes in turn. 
and because it's electronically controlled, we can sequence them. So it's like a sequence of flash photographs. Uh, each one being a, an X-ray photograph of the brain. Underneath the patient's head is this curved detector that you can see in the image, um, uh, especially made for us by Fujifilm. Uh, and that gathers, you know, the image. We get 29 images, and then the clever software stitches that together into a CT image, and uh, and we can see what we need to see. So because we've got no moving parts. Uh, it's it's very simple, very lightweight, very reliable, and very cheap. And that's our our dream is, uh, you know, cheap enough that we could put one of these in the back of every ambulance. So if you have a stroke, you know, your nearest ambulance is what you're worried about, not your nearest CT machine. That makes a lot of sense. Is it something that could fly as well to get out to really yeah. remote people? <clears throat> that's the whole idea. and. Uh, you saw we did the um, the, the, the uh, contract signing today at the Royal Flying Doctor Service, uh, but that's exactly it because in, in in remote areas they're a long way from a CT machine. Uh, but yes, at 30 kilograms we can easily fit that, and in fact we showed today there's an, an awful lot of vision you'll probably see in the TV news tonight uh, how easily that fits into uh, into the RFDS airframes aircraft. Of so, uh, and that's game changing for, for people in those remote areas because they, uh, they've just got no hope. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, the retrieval ambulance, you know, otherwise would, would take four hours to get there. Cool. Um, in terms of like accuracy and power, how does it compare to conventional CT scans? Is it going to be a similar thing? Um, we're we're aiming. We're working with um, the the Johns Hopkins University in in, in Baltimore. Uh, interestingly, that they, they were trying to make this uh, same concept of a of a kind of no moving part um, a CT scanner uh, using conventional technology, and they tried that for many years and discovered it's just not possible. Uh, they they you know they had to make it move, and when you move, you you lose the accuracy. Um, but but they've, they've joined our team because in the process, they did learn an awful lot about image reconstruction and contrast. And because uh, you're looking for very subtle things, we're looking for a, a, a bleed in the brain uh, as, as small as one millimeter. Um, now, we, uh, the, the Johns Hopkins people believe from the way our system works and what, what they've seen in their simulations that they've run will end up performing better than the uh, than an eight slice uh, uh, helical conventional CT. So they're, they're predicting that, I mean, we've still got a lot of work to do refining the algorithms just to, to maximize the image, but their, their bet is we're gonna do well, well better than conventional technology. Um, and power consumption is, is tiny by comparison, as indeed is the X-ray dose that you're giving the patient. Um, so uh, yeah, lots and lots of advantages from uh, from this technology. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's so you've just received a grant to further develop this scanner. What's the time frame on getting it into ambulances? <clears throat> uh, good question. Look, we're um, we'll be we'll have our first prototype, which is uh, uh, you know a, a design that's you know certified to be safe to be used on patients. Uh, in, in about two to two and a half years from now, we'll be doing our first patient imaging. Um, and the, the path to market thereafter uh, really depends on uh, our, our FDA approval. Uh, we, we think we can get a 510K on that uh, and basically compare ourselves to an existing CT image. Uh, if, if we can do that and, and, and avoid having to do a whole new uh, a de novo application, then then it's it's a, it's a number of weeks after that before we'd be certified to uh, uh, to to use it for for real. So uh, yeah, don't like to be solid on the time scale because there's a few little ifs in in the regulatory pathway, but there's a good chance we we could be using this you know within three years. Cool, that's very soon. Hopefully, it works out. It is. Well, we're, we're the, I mean the. The technology invention is kind of behind us. We, you know, this, this technology developed the prototype imaging we've done to get to this part, to win the grant from the Medical Research Future Fund. We showed that this was possible. So our, our proof of concepts already done. 
Uh, you know, the, the, the X-ray tube technology exists and, you know, we've had a first stab at the image reconstruction, which is, is giving us almost as good performance already uh, as a conventional uh, device. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a process of good solid engineering now. Um, and, and part of the importance uh, in, in today's event, working with the RFDS and the SA Ambulance, is, uh, you know, they're an important part of our design process because they're the people who are going to be using it in airplanes and ambulances. And we want to, we want to feed their user input to the earliest stages of product design, um, you know, rather than fall into the trap, which many companies do of inventing this wonderful thing and taking it along to the user and saying, isn't this great? And they go, yes, but. <laughs> uh, what exactly is the point? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah sense. exactly. So, I mean, we're, that's why we get them involved today saying, we got to understand what their workflow is when they when they would use it, how they would use it, what power supplies are available, how much room is there in the airplane, where would you mount it, would you ever X-ray outside, or was it all would be inside the you know? So all of that is is stuff that that feeds into the design, and the the closer the designers get to the people who will use this, the you know the better the product is going to be, and the more the people who use it will love it. Of course, um, this isn't the first. Um, X-ray product that MicroX has developed, though, is it? There's other stuff that you're building off as well. Um, no, no, indeed, no. you can see uh, you can see behind me the production line for our our uh, our first product, which is uh, a bedside imager. Um, this is basically for taking you know conventional two-dimensional X-rays of a patient in an ICU cubicle. Obviously, you've got a patient in an ICU and they're on life support. If you need an x-ray, you can't unplug them from life support to take them down to radiology. So the x-ray has to come bedside to get the image. Uh, that's not new. It's been done for about 30 years. But with our technology, we can, uh, these wee carts we're building here are, are like 95 uh, kilograms and they compete against, you know, big supermarket trolleys weighing about half a ton. They're still mobile, but they're pretty clumsy and, uh, and hard to use by comparison. So uh, this little device here, there's about 250 of these in service in 30 countries around the world. So uh, just starting to build build some good market share. Cool. Okay, I think those were all my questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add? We're in a pretty exciting uh, a pretty exciting place. I'd, I'd probably add the the. Uh, I mean, we we started life as a medical device company. Um, but of course, having, having been the first of, you know, many, many companies around the world have been trying to, to get this carbon nanotube, this electronic uh, x-ray tube to work. You know, we, we here in Adelaide managed to be the first, um, uh, which is what's allowed us to, to field these products. Um, but there's lots of people trying to catch up. So we're, we're trying to commercialize a lot of products very quickly to build this into, into quite a giant company. Um, and uh, one of the areas that, that, that we've been uh, coaxed into is, uh, is, is security. Uh, so we're launching a product next year for um, bomb technicians, uh, an X-ray camera that, that is, is a little self-contained. Uh, it works just like a camera, point and, point and shoot, uh, only it's an X-ray. So there's no separate detector like there normally is. Uh, uh, this little box can be picked up by a robot. You carry it downrange pointed at the suspicious object and it'll give you a high resolution of what's in picture x-ray picture of what's inside so you can see if it is a bomb and if so how to defuse it um, that that's game changing because the only way to do that today is manually to take the x-ray source and the x-ray detector and place it around the object manually which is obviously more than hazardous uh, so uh, this this new device we're going to launch next year is going to be huge because suddenly the bomb techs won't need ever again to go anywhere near the, the bomb, uh, which is, you know, very good for their health insurance policies. Um, and uh, we're also very close to finalizing a contract with the, using similar technology, actually. Uh, we've been chosen by the American government's Department of Homeland Security to develop the next generation of airport security checkpoint, uh, which basically builds on, uh, if anyone can remember when they last went to an airport, that is, but <laughs> if you can remember, uh, you know, the big trend has been self-service. 
self-service to check your, your underfloor bags, self-service to get your boarding card, self-service to get access to the, to the boarding gate. Mm. Um, the bit they haven't been able to automate is, um, the, uh, is security. Um, but yes. our technology can do that. So if you think like the sort of self-service passport uh, cubicles that you use now, uh, we're basically going to add an x-ray and a, and a body search to that uh, so that the whole checkpoint experience becomes self-service unmanned. And uh, we've been selected, as I say, by the American government to develop the, a design for the next generation of that, uh, which is in itself a giant business, um, yes. you know, because they, they, you know, they run two and a half thousand checkpoints across uh, across North America. Um, so and each one of those would take 20 or 30 of these scanners. So we're, uh, we're pretty excited about that. And, and hopefully we'll be signing that contract uh, very shortly as well. It's exciting times. I, I expect we'll be seeing a lot of micro X over the next few years in that case. I uh, very much hope so. We're, we're <laughs> getting quite busy and we're, and we're getting very big. Mm. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, we're 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 really uh, really really proud really proud to be you know an Australian a, a globally focused Australian manufacturer you know based on this on this unique technology which we're, we're going to take to these to these uh, applications around the world. Mm. Cool. Well, thank you very much for that, Peter. My pleasure.